Hello, I'm Michael Tam and this is the third video in this learning activity. You have previously learned to explain the benefits of absolute cardiovascular disease risk assessment. This video will cover the Australian Cardiovascular Disease Risk Chart and Calculator. The second learning outcome for the learning activity is to be able to identify the clinical information required to conduct the risk assessment. We will be going through the algorithm in the Quick Reference Guide for Health Professionals Absolute Cardiovascular Disease Risk Management from the National Vascular Disease Prevention Alliance. This document can be downloaded from the Heart Foundation website and is one of the key references of this learning activity. This is the algorithm. In essence, we need to identify the target group, who do we apply the risk assessment algorithm on, what information do we gather on these individuals. Is the patient in a special category that automatically places them at high risk? For those not in such a category, we then use a risk calculator. The management of patients is guided by the patient's risk category. So, target group, information together, risk stratification, management based on risk. The target group are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples aged 35 years or older, or the general population aged 45 years or older. This obviously is in individuals without a known history of cardiovascular disease. Assessment. These are the risk factors that we identified before. These are the things we need to collect in the history to get a comprehensive assessment of the risk. The factors with the asterisks, smoking, blood pressure, serum lipids, age, sex and diagnosis of diabetes along with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander status constitute the minimum data set we need to use the risk calculator. People who have one of these clinical features are automatically considered to be categorically to be at high risk. Basically, older people with diabetes, diabetes with microalbuminuria, moderate or severe chronic kidney disease, familial hypercholesterolemia, very high blood pressure or cholesterol. It is important that when you see the term low risk, moderate risk and high risk in the literature, these qualitative descriptors are not being used subjectively. In Australia, we describe cardiovascular disease absolute risks over a five year period. Other countries describe these risks over 10 years. In the Australian context, high risk is greater than 15% probability of developing symptomatic cardiovascular disease in the following five years. For those individuals who are not automatically considered at high risk, we can use a risk calculator. Most versions of these make use of the Framingham risk equation using data from the Framingham Heart Study. Now you guys are going to be clinicians, so I'm not going to inflict on you the use of the original published tables. Rather, we are going to use the Australian specific charts and calculators. You will be expected to know how to use these assessment tools and this is something that is examinable in both Phase 2 and Phase 3. You were introduced to the Australian risk chart and calculator in the Marco has a heart attack scenario in Phase 1. In Phase 2, you are expected to demonstrate proficiency at using these tools in the context of comprehensive risk assessment. Firstly, a few words about the Framingham Heart Study. This is a major study with the original cohort starting in 14, uh, 1948. These were residents in Framingham, Massachusetts in the US. The context of the study is that at the time, CVD mortality was steadily rising in the US, but the general causes of heart attacks and strokes were unknown. The Framingham Heart Study is how we know that blood pressure, smoking, and hypercholesterolemia increase the risk of heart attacks and strokes, and moreover, allow us to quantify that risk. It is important, however, to be aware of some of the limitations of this tool as well. The participants obviously reflect the population of Framingham, Massachusetts. It is likely that the risk of people who are obese or morbidly obese, or those who have diabetes, or those who suffer from enduring socioeconomic disadvantage are underestimated by the tool. For those of you with an interest in the history of medicine, I suggest visiting the Framingham Heart Study website as an optional activity. The link is in the activity sheet. These are the Australian charts. To give an example of use, let's say it's an individual without diabetes. A male who is a smoker, aged between 55 and 64 years, 
has a systolic blood pressure of 160 and a total to HDL cholesterol ratio of 6. Triangulate the data and it is a dark orange square. If we look back at the key, dark orange indicates that this individual has an estimated 5-year cardiovascular disease risk of 25-29%. to 29%. That is, approximately 1 in 4 to 1 in 3 people like this individual will have symptomatic cardiovascular disease, which might be a heart attack or stroke, in the next 5 years. We have covered the first three learning outcomes of this learning activity. A face-to-face -face interactive tutorial will follow this online learning activity, where we will apply what we've learned so far to the management of patient scenarios. Congratulations for completing this online learning activity. Please make use of the activity sheet and complete the self-directed activities and optional readings. The activity sheet also includes questions that test your attainment of the learning outcomes with answers. See you later.